Now that the fuel subsidy has been removed, federal government grants six firms to li the license to import petroleum products. Also, federal government implements the 7.5% VAT on the diesel. We'll be discussing all of these on the program this morning. Also, we'll have off the press that we'll be looking at what the headlines are on our national dailies. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on uh, The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji and on behalf of the entire crew, I say it's a delight to have you join us this morning. Today, we'll be concentrating or we'll be reflecting on uh, collective good over personal benefit. How much of these do we even think about in Nigeria? How much do we talk about collective good? How much do we talk about community nowadays? Is it only the selfish uh, thoughts that we have now? Think about yourself, love yourself. Nobody talks about loving your neighbor anymore. And so it has become a part of our culture right now that we talk about ourselves only. Are we a nation of people willing to sacrifice personal comfort for the greater good? How patriotic are we? That's, why, that's what we'll be reflecting on in the course of the show this morning. So wherever you are, whoever you are, as you watch us this morning, Ask yourself what, like an American president once said, uh, think of what you can do for America uh, rather than what America can do for you. So how many of us really think about what we can do for Nigeria to make Nigeria great rather than what Nigeria can do for us? The other day we saw the news how someone was vandalizing uh, rail tracks. He didn't care if the federal government spent money to do that. He didn't care if uh, a, a rail or a train will derail when it gets to that point where he's removing uh, those um, uh, things from the rail track. He didn't care if anybody died uh, because of his action. He just wanted to make money and that's the end of it. So even if stealing is stealing, sometimes when you steal, uh, it's some people will say there's some stealing that has a human face. This one is wickedness, uh, stupidity, if I, if, if I may, and so many other things rolled into one. How can you vandalize what the government has put in place for you, and tomorrow you go about telling people that the government is not doing much? Well, wherever you are, we hope that you are up and about and you're at your work, and um, because uh, uh, we already know that any time past 6 o'clock, traffic builds up. As I was coming this morning, um, once I got to Ogudu from, from Bega Axis, uh, the traffic began to build up. Only God knows where, where it has reached now and how slow the traffic might be uh, when you're coming to the island. And this same story will be replicated in so many other places. So if you live in Lagos and you have to work in the morning, you need to always move very, very early in the morning. Okay, so we have some few stories uh, that uh, people are talking about, um, not necessarily uh, having to wait till when we're, we have the, of the press, but there are some top trending issues that are being dealt with or are being discussed over social media and so many other places or so many other platforms. The Lagos State Government clamps down on alcohol sale at motor parks. <laughs> okay, so so many people are are just asking the question, how long will this uh, stand? Because this law or this um, talk about clamping down on the sale of alcohol at motor parks, it, it's not new. It's been there. And since they said it, we have not seen any implementation or any drive or any, any clamping down, as it were, on the people who sell these things. Now, the questions I, the question I don't know if the government has asked itself is, uh, why do these people even drink at the motor parks? What is the reason behind? Who are the people who drink? Why do they drink and who are the people who drink at the motor parks? Because I, as a person, I wouldn't go to the motor park and take alcohol, take whatever they do, or what they take there and the government is talking about it. But now, this, the third question is, uh, when you ask the first question, why do they drink? Second question, who drinks it in the first place? And the third question is that, are you, by clamping down, does it mean 
that people who work at the motor parks will not drink anymore. It's just like saying, okay, since it's a motor park, do not drink in the mot at the motor park. I just drink at home. So you find a situation where drivers might uh, get drunk at home before they get to the motor parks and all that. So I don't know. Some people say people drink so much at the motor park because a lot of them sleep there. And even a lot of them sleep there uh, in the cold and all that, and that's the only way that they used to warm themselves, that's the excuse they give, then what can you do about people who sleep at the motor park? Can you make conditions so good that people will not need to sleep at the motor parks anymore? Or can you make the conditions so stringent that people cannot sleep at the motor parks anymore? Well, these are questions you need to answer. But will it work? Only Okada so far has worked, and it works seasonally. Whenever it's time for election, at least the time for campaign, Okadas were moving, you know, almost freely. But right now, the clamping down has, has returned to how it used to be. Okay, so it's good. So maybe they will take it gradually. But who is going to enforce this law? Is it going to be Kai, the kick against indiscipline that we have? Or is it going to be the motor park touts themselves that are going to do this? Or their, their leadership? Or who is going to do this? Some people, that is their business. So where are you moving them to? Are you moving them close to motor parks? <laughs> because if they don't sell at the motor parks, they might just go close to the motor parks, but they're not really at the motor parks. And the people who, who patronize them will continue to patronize them. So if the, if the state government can do this, they should not only clamp down, but they should also look at uh, reasons why people drink in the first place and who the, type of, or who the type of people who drink are and see if they can clear the motor parks of these people. If you can clear the motor parks of these people, probably they wouldn't be drinking anymore because a passenger just passing through doesn't go there to uh, think about drinking. It's the people who work there. And what, is, what are the crop of people that work at the motor parks? Look at them. If the reason the drink is something that you can address, then you go ahead and address it. But well, uh, one step at a time, if the government can do this, good for all of us, so that we don't find people who drink too much at the motor parks. <laughs> okay, uh, Tinubu appoints Hakim Odumosu as chairman of EFCC. If this news is true, uh, Tinubu ha appoints Hakim Odumosu as chairman of EFCC. We heard over the weekend how everybody was talking about the fact that service chiefs have been, have been uh, removed. All of them, except um, very few or even just one of them, the DSS um, head was not removed. But everybody else was removed and replaced. So now Hakim Odumosu, that used to be in Lagos here as the... Uh, the head of the, the cops here in Lagos, uh, has been appointed as the chairman of EFCC. We do hope that axing all of these people uh, out of office will bring the needed uh, change that we want in Nigeria, that we need in Nigeria, because it's not enough to uh, remove one person and put another person if all they will do will be the same thing as the, the people who have been removed uh, were doing. We do hope that Body language, action, everything that the present administration is doing will help people sit up and do their duties very well. So now we have a new EFCC uh, chairman, we have a new IGP, we have a new chief of defense staff. Everybody is new, apart from the DSS boss. So we do hope they will sit up. That is our prayer, because nothing else matters if they will not sit up to do the work for which they have been appointed to do. Nigerians are, are, are really tired of doing the same thing all the time. I like to say all the time, uh, if you want a different, a different result, you may want to change the approach towards uh, tackling any problem at all. Because if you keep doing the same thing all the time, you will still keep getting the same results. So let's hope that Hakim Odumosu will bring that needed uh, uh, breath of fresh air to EFCC and make sure anybody that needs to be probed will be probed. And anybody who needs to be prosecuted will be prosecuted. Anybody who needs to be jailed will be jailed. That will not only be his, uh, his duty, but uh, the judiciary will have to sit up as well and collaborate with all these people that have been changed so that work will go on. Nigerians will know that 
they're having value for their money, they're having value for whatever they're putting back into the society. Because today we're looking at uh, collective good over personal benefit, and we're also uh, looking at whether our nation is patriotic enough, the people are willing to sacrifice personal comfort for the greater good. So if people are willing to sacrifice personal comfort for greater good, will the greater good come in the first place? For instance, if someone comes to me, a politician comes to me and says, um, I'm going to give you five million naira so that you keep your mouth shut and the road that is supposed to be constructed to your community uh, will not be uh, constructed. I say no you have to uh, construct this road. And then I miss the five million, and then the government still does not construct the road. I have lost the five million, I have lost the road, the community suffers for it, and everybody is still suffering. So if people sacrifice, what will the government do to make sure that their sacrifice means something to the government as well? Because if you say you want to lead, it means that you have accepted discomfort, you have accepted to be in public glare, you have accepted public scrutiny, you have accepted a lot of things, you would move out of your comfort zone because you are a servant. That's what the leaders really are. Leaders are servants. Leaders are servants, in case you didn't hear that. So if you're vying for a political post, if you're vying for even a position in your place of work that you will lead the rest, it means that you are ready to serve everybody else. And for the people who are being served, it means that you will be appreciative of the service that you are getting so that you do your bit to make sure that the person do not lose sight of what he's supposed to do. At the end of the day, we find out that so many things that happen to us in Nigeria is because of ourselves. We are the ones who, 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 who cross our hands and call the bones of this world and say, ah, you're too much because the person is buying us a drink, the person is giving us some money to go and marry a second wife, the person is giving us something to start a business on our own. We're forgetting collective good. We're forgetting the schools that some people need to go to if they cannot send their children to private schools. We're, so, we're forgetting the roads that they need to be that need to be constructed so that the average farmer that may not, may not have this opportunity uh, to get to a politician that will give him or her uh, that money that he needs to do what he needs to do can pass and go to the market and sell their goods. We're forgetting electricity that should go to every community uh, so that at least they can charge their phones, at least they can uh, power their generators, uh, or oh, sorry, not generator, at least they can, they can do the, the things that they need to do. Small businesses in the village that need uh, electricity, maybe selling of pure water, as we call it in Nigeria, maybe selling of uh, fish uh, that needs to be refrigerated, maybe selling of some other things that need electricity. We forget all of that and say we need our personal comfort. That is where we get it wrong in Nigeria. Sometimes when we say politicians think about personal interest, uh, or yeah, personal interest, and that personal interest is usually uh, at the cost of what the nation should gain. Whatever will bring money to you, whatever will put food on your table, you get it, no matter what it is. But let us know today that the end does not justify the means. The end never justifies the means. The means has to be as good as the end. You cannot say, I will have to kill all my children so that I become rich. So you tell yourself that because uh, you eventually got rich, uh, the means you, got, you, you took to becoming rich is justified by the fact that you actually became rich. That's what saying the end justifies the means means. Uh, literally. So the end just does not justify the means if the end and the means are not the same. You go and, okay, let me not use that analogy. Anyway, today we're talking about uh, patriotism and we do hope that you are a patriotic Nigerian or if you're not, you begin to cultivate the habit of being patriotic in yourself, in your children, if you're a teacher, in your students, if you are um, a CEO in one company or the other, or anywhere, any capacity you find yourself, be patriotic and teach others to be patriotic because that is only when we can make our nation grow. If you're patriotic, you will ask the right questions. If you're patriotic, you will do the things that you need to do. 
as a person. But for now, let's look at what the weather is because uh, when I was coming, I'll use myself as an example, uh, to a, a greater length of the road that I was coming to this place, it was dry. But I got to like Third Mainland Bridge and it was raining heavily. So let's see what the weather says about today so that you can plan your itinerary well.